Hey guys, now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at one of the most unique keyboard solutions I've seen on the market. And as you're looking at this, you may be asking yourself, is that a keyboard or is that a laptop? It has a screen and it has a keyboard. It looks like a laptop to me, but guess what? This is a keyboard solution that will give you a second screen in one solution. Let's go to check it out. All right guys, so now this is where this solution really shines, right? Uh, first of all, the fact that you can have a secondary display tied into the keyboard, and it's something that is really easy to tuck away. All you do is you push the button here on the side, you're able to fold it down, and you know it's not in the way now. Now the cool thing about this solution is that the display itself can tuck away really easily. So you have a little button here on the side that if you press it and you lift, you'll notice you'll be able to change the angle of your display to get the again the angle that you'd like to be able to consume the content especially depending on how your primary display is set up so you'll notice that here i have the secondary display and my uh, first display is just slightly above it now i can adjust this even further if i want so if i want it like this but you'll notice it takes up a little bit and i actually have to tilt my head a little bit so what i like to do is i like to keep this a little bit lower let's say around there so that it's kind of meeting the dark area of my display and this doesn't force me to actually have to, again, tilt my head. Now, the other cool thing about this display is that you'll see that the actual screen itself is still incredibly legible, even at that angle. So I'm not really perceiving any kind of loss of image quality or color quality just because it's the angle. So typing on the keyboard is also really nice. I'm going to go ahead and type something. And what I really like about it is that it's not super clicky. This actually is the, the, the right, I would say, at the right noise level for me personally. I'm going to type again. Love, love, love how that sounds. Uh, this is a full keyboard, so you see you have your escape and all your function keys. You have your page up, page down. It is missing the number pad. I'm okay with that. I Most of the keyboards that I use don't have a number pad. Um, I'm okay by not having it. And this does work on a Mac and on Windows. Matter of fact, I am running this on a Mac Ultra. I'm gonna go ahead and pan up a little bit so you can see what's going on. And you can see that there is my Mac screen. So here at the bottom, I have my secondary display with keyboard that I'm typing. I have the RGB color going. And at the very top, I actually have some other stuff that's going on. Obviously, one of the cool things about this display is that you'll be able to have it for either running videos, you can run it, uh, I could actually put like my Bamboo Lab, these are uh, some of the jigs that we're working on now, I can put them over here on the bottom and I can print it here if that's something that I'd like to do. And as we, as I'm, let's say for example, working, I can actually do this. So here I have this video going, and the cool thing also about this video is that it's not just that it's running here in the secondary screen, but the touch screen works as well. So again, Mac, with a touch screen. That's cool. I can just tap right here if I want it to play and it's going to play. Now, depending on the machine that you're on, if you're connecting this, let's say for example, and by the way, I can also, let's play this, and I can lower the volume just by using the knob that's right there. So this is playing as I'm working there. So I can actually um, edit videos. I can actually proof videos. I can do everything I want to do as I'm working on something else on the top screen. This gives me a lot of power. This combined with all of the expandability, all the ports that we have also makes this incredibly useful. One of the things I've been doing is I've been testing this out with the Samsung Galaxy Fold 6, uh, which has DeX. You can actually run DeX on this while your phone is on the side, which makes it even more compelling. Now, before showing you how it works with the phone, I just wanted to show you how things are configured here on the Mac. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into system and we'll take a look at some of the configuration choices that we have here on our display. Now, as you take a look at what's going on here in the display, you can see that I have my monitor one, uh, which we have here at the very top. This is a Dell. Next to it, I have the K3, and I have the displays extended. I could mirror them if I want, and uh, you'll notice that what color profile I'm using and that the resolution here or the rotation here is pretty much standard. So this is pretty straightforward. I have not installed any software whatsoever all I've done is plugged it in and it works. Now, one of the things I have noticed is that if you are just using, I would say, the, the keyboard without having an SSD drive inside of it, there's no need to have the power going into the actual keyboard. 
I have noticed that if I have an SSD connected to it, the keyboard itself, that it requires more power and having external power for the keyboard is required. But right now it's just running with the USB-C cable connecting from the keyboard to the actual, my uh, Ultra, and it's working fine. Now, while everything still looks the same on the actual display, some things have changed. I'm now connected to this display, this keyboard, using my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold, and this is the 6. So watch, I'm going to go ahead and tap here. So I'm going to go into mouse mode, and you'll notice that as I'm moving right here, you can see that little mouse right there. That's This is what's going on here. So now this is an external display and keyboard for my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold using DeX. Now, the cool thing about this is that all the audio is going to come through my phone in the way I have it configured, but I have now this larger display. And the cool thing about DeX is that your phone can serve as a giant keyboard or a giant mouse, or while this is playing, I can actually, I can actually have two modes going on. DeX coming over here, not just for video, but I have a desktop version. And then over here, I have my phone and I can use my phone for other aspects. And then once again, all the full touchscreen capability is still present. So you can notice right here, this is what DeX would look like. It really looks just like Windows. And again, I can have a full experience here while still using my phone over here. That's powerful. That makes this thing super cool. The one thing I would say though, when you're using this keyboard combination with DeX, that you do need to have the keyboard powered. With the Ultra, with my Mac, I didn't have to have it powered because the USB-C was supplying enough power for the keyboard and the display. In this case, you have to have that external power source connected for this to work. All right, so here you see that you have your SD slot, micro SD slot. You have uh, two USB-Cs. One is a PD and then one is a USB, right? So one of these is going to be connected to your uh, monitor output on your USB-C device. So this would be your laptop. So this is where your video is going to come through. And the other one is that power source that we talked about. This is going to be that um, power brick that you'd connect, uh, PD power that you'd be bringing in uh, if you're leveraging a lot of the different aspects, especially if you're leveraging, again, the actual uh, NVMe slot, which you'll see here in a second. And then here you have your two USB-A, and then followed by, again, uh, power right here that you can actually, uh, has a little toggle for adjustments, um, and then also, you know, accessing menus and things of that nature. So here you have, again, all of those connections. And for those of you who are curious about what the NVMe looks like, so we'll go ahead and open this up right here. I think this is another one of those features that sets this apart from some of the other keyboard solutions I've seen in the market. So here you can see your NVMe right there. We'll make sure that that's in focus for you guys. So you can see the connection there. You just slide one in, close it up, and you're good to go. Uh, and it does have a little nub here that you'd use a rubberized stopper to hold the NVMe in place. So you slide it in and then you basically pop it down. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. The bottom, pretty straightforward. And for those of you who are curious on the thickness, that's how thick it is, right? So pretty nice. Now it also then has this little button here. Let me show you what happens with this button. This is going to allow you the ability to adjust the actual uh, angle of the screen. So here's position one, position two, and it's sticky. Position three, position four, position five, right? Now it's not going to move. The way it moves is by pushing this button and then it moves over. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this right here so you can see, you know, and pardon the reflection, but we're going to go ahead and do it again. So I have the ability to make this pretty much because of the, you know, the tension, and I'm going to come back to here. I'm going to show you where it basically starts holding itself. Let's go up. Oh, it's a little heavy right there. So that's pretty much the angle that I can have it. And it's very, very legible. I'm going to come to the next one. Next position. Next position. Full position. Right. So right there, it's locked in that position. And if I want it to go down, I have to press this button because it locks it in. And then I can change it to the position I'd like. And then I can let go. Let's see how far we can go. Right there, you can see that it will fall because of the weight of the monitor. So, uh, and again, I was getting great, great resolution out of this and this experience. So 
What I want to do is I want to show you some of the accessories that you're going to have included, right? Because so there's a lot of cool stuff that it comes with. So it does come with several cables. And I'm going to leave this display here while I grab uh, some of the cable options that come with it. Uh, so we'll flip this around. So you do have, again, um, a screen protector or a cover. Let me show it. So here is one of the covers. And what this cover is really all about is, uh, I don't know if, like I will, even though you could probably travel with this, I don't know if I would put this in a bag and take it with me. But this guy right here basically allows you, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up again, all right? To do something like this, all right? So that's gonna protect that screen. And then when I bring it down, now it's protected. No one even know that there is a monitor underneath it. We have more. Now, I have a couple USB-C uh, cables there, boring stuff. So I'm just gonna look at some of the hot stuff that we have going on here. So notice this. So here what you have is, uh, this is what is gonna be required, right? So you have this USB or this HDMI cable, which is gonna be going uh, to your computer or laptop that supports HDMI. And then in order to get that to convert and to work on this, the screen, you would basically take these two and this, the USB-C goes into the USB-C port. And then you have these two USB-A uh, connectors that you would connect to the USB-A connectors of the actual keyboard. And then you'd be able to use um, a device that doesn't have video out via USB-C. That's critical. Now, I was using this on my Mac without any additional software. So I actually did an extend, I did a duplicate, and it worked well. And one of the things I also wanted to mention about the screen is that it's a touch screen. So you'll see it in the actual trial, how I'm using it, that I can actually touch even on the Mac and the touch screen will work. That is special, right? I don't really see, I have a lot of touch screens that I've tested and you have to install special software, special drivers. And just by connecting this, I was able to use this touch screen as an extended monitor on a Mac. That's pretty cool. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.